What's up, Make Pop Music? It's Austin here from Make Pop Music and Austin Hall Audio, and today I'm gonna show you how to make a song like Take My Breath by The Weeknd. So baby, look me in my eyes, take the word tonight. Let me give you all my loving. Run my hands right up your thighs like you fantasize. But the fever starts to rush in. Now baby, let me get you high. What's up everyone, it's Austin and I am back with another tutorial and with a weekend recently releasing Take My Breath, I figured what could be more appropriate than doing a video inspired by that. So today what I wanted to do was do a production with you guys where we'll kind of work in that similar style, use some of those techniques, some of those tricks, some of those sounds and influences and kind of turn that into a very similar pop song. So. At the end, this probably will be super similar. These videos are never necessarily to just show you how to copy an artist's style. It's more so to show you how to dissect that, turn that into something your own, and then utilize those tips into something a little bit more creative and unique. So even with something like what we'll probably end up having today, if I was gonna release that myself or if I was gonna do that for an artist, I would definitely make sure that it was a little bit more unique rather than being so similar to a weekend reference like we do on these videos. But I figured this is a really good way to kind of show you what's going on in pop music right now and kind of utilize some of those things in your own productions. If you have any questions about anything that we go over today, let us know in the comments down below. We will probably be moving pretty quickly, so I'll try to answer as much as I can. And then if you like this video and you like how it comes out, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe because that definitely helps us out a ton but without further ado i'm assuming we have a ton to do to kind of get something similar so let's go ahead and hop in the dot and see what we can get all right let's go ahead and start with this what i want to do to kind of start is just build up the drums because i feel like this song is going to be so drum dependent so what we should probably do is go ahead and start laying down a kick i'm just going to use groove agent so i can kind of write it in as midi and then just drag in samples and try out different ones and I'm, i think i basically just want like a four on the floor at this moment but um before we do that let's find a quick little tempo So Cubase opens at 120. Um, I feel like that's a bit too fast. Let me try like 110. That feels a bit slow. Um, let's try like 115. Yeah, I think we can work with that. All right, let's go ahead and find a kick sample. All right, so I'm gonna drag in kick two from the wave. Let me get this feeling right. Turn that down a little bit so it doesn't kill y'all. All right, I'm just gonna lay a four on the floor down. Okay, so I have a kick. I'm just going to shorten it up a little bit right here just to cut out some of that um, like analog noises in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw some reverb and some EQ on it to make it sound a little bit more 80s. All right, so for the reverb, I'm just going to use Valhalla Vintage Verb because I can basically do kind of like a room. So I got like a, a medium gate and I'm just kind of changing that to the 80s preset. And then this is what it sounds like. So it kind of gives me that roomy gated sound that you're really familiar with. And I think that I just want to add a little bit of EQ to go ahead and give this a little bit more punch and a little bit more urgency when it, when it actually hits. All right, so I just did a little shelf EQ, super simple, nothing crazy. It'll just help it kind of poke through the mix once we start adding extra stuff. So now that we've got in that kick, I think what's next is we need to go ahead and start looking for some like hi-hats or something like that. I kind of want a real hi-hat loop since real hats were used in the weekends track and then uh, just having like kind of a loop rather than me just programming stuff, I think will help it kind of sit in a little bit better. So we're at 115, but I'll just start at 100 because we could kind of work with those. Something like that I think will work totally fine. I like using the overheads from this pack. Um, this is on our website and we kind of offer natural, which is just gonna be like close mic and then overhead and then room mics. But I feel like when I'm using overhead, I get a lot of that kind of room sound to make it feel a little bit more lively without it just completely washing out all of the transients like you know the specific room sample would. So I tend to go for overheads when I'm using live hat loops and this is what it sounds like. And then I think I just wanna go ahead and do like a little open hat on the end. All right, so I got that loop all lined up and then I got an open hat in here just to kind of give it that feel. Let's go ahead and start laying down a snare um, pretty similarly to my kicks. I like writing my snares in Groove Agent with MIDI. That way, if I wanna layer up the sample or swap the sample later, I definitely can. And for this, I feel like I want like a vintage snare, but that still has like some modern punch and some modern pop and kind of crackle. So I'm going to go to the Dark Pop Volume 2 pack because I know we have like a whole section of vintage snares in there. And um, I'll just kind of start playing around and seeing. I think that'll work. I think I'm going to pitch it up a little bit though so it's kind of a little shorter and snappier. 
That'll work. I don't really need something super big and kind of low end and chuggy. And then I think I'm just gonna add like some Valhalla Vintage and kind of do what we did earlier where I kind of get a gate going. Let's do, let's try like gated snare and then let's try this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and lay that down. All right, so I tweaked it for a second and um, I actually just added it to the second half because like take my breath, we'll probably just start off with a kick in the hi-hat and then kind of bring the snare in once everything else comes in. And I just got this little reverb and this little EQ. Taking a little bit of sizzle off that snare to make it sound a little bit more analog. I needed the kick to sound a little bit more modern to punch through, but I want that snare to be a little bit darker and kind of more vintage. And then I think what I want to do now is I want to just start layering up a clap. So I'm going to go to some of the samples that are in the wave and I just want a clap that'll kind of help poke through the mix. So let's do... I can probably use something like that. I think the room from that will be nice. All right, so after playing around, I actually ended up swapping clap two out for clap 13 from that pack. And it just adds a nice little bit of top end. You could even tune it down if you want, but I don't mind it like this. And then the next thing I wanna do is start adding in some percussion on the back end, just cause I feel like that's pretty popular in 80 songs. So let's go to the perk folder. Honestly, that'll work perfectly fine. Cause I'm just gonna add that almost like how in a trap song you'd have it be on like that backbeat. We're gonna do something similar, so. Let's try that. Try this, and then I'm probably just gonna give it a little reverb and make it louder. Cool, yeah, let's do that. All right, and I think that'll pretty much do it for the drums for now. I kinda wanna start adding like guitars and bass lines and stuff, but this gives me a good basis. Nothing crazy, just feels super 80s. I can kind of write an easy bass line to that. So let's start doing that now. What I want to do is I'll probably use Trillian because in the song, he kind of uses like this like muted bass, probably I'm assuming like a P bass that they just tracked. Um, but since we don't have that at hand, I'm just going to go ahead and use Trillian because y'all can probably acquire that pretty easily. And uh, yeah, I'll just start flipping through bases and I'll let you know when I find one. Okay, so I found a patch in Trillian. It's just going to be this re uh, retro 60s mute staccato bass. So I'm gonna play around for a second, write a bass line, and then I'll check back in with you guys. All right, so after playing around for a second, I got something that is just in, I believe it's B minor. And um, it's just super simple, basically just goes between the B and the G. So let's hear that. So what I wanna do now is I wanna start adding some layers. So I'm gonna add a couple kind of muted layers to kind of just help that little kind of pick noise and that staccato really come through, especially once it gets to be a kind of dense arrangement. I almost want a bass that sounds like it was played palm muted. So I'm just gonna start layering that up so I can kind of get that effect. All right, so I ended up finding a couple extra layers off camera. Um, I just found the clean fender mute, which is kind of doing the same thing. I'm just scooping out a lot of the low end. And you can kind of hear how that'll give me that plucky mid-range. And then we have like the Rick P-Bass Moot Chew Staccato. And that's kind of giving me more of that like scooped out grindy pick noise. And so when we layer those over, it's super subtle, but it kind of helps create a little bit more um, kind of pick noise in that bass. Where if we just had that main, it would be Just a little layering like that can really help electronic kind of digital programmed elements sound a little bit more lively. When you can start adding some of those layers in that have fret noise and that have pick noise, that can be a really good way to just add uh, some lifeliness to it. So now we have that as the baseline, we have the main drums. I think we need to start adding in some guitar. So what I'll probably do is off camera, just track a couple different guitar things, bring it back in, and then I'll process it with you guys so y'all can kind of see. But guitar for this, if we're going along to the weekend reference, is gonna be super simple. It'll probably just be like pedaling on a note or two. All right, so now we have this main constant guitar. I just played it on a Fender Strat and in the mix, it just kind of sounds like this with nothing. 
So I know we need a stereo tone. We're gonna side chain it a little bit and we'll do some processing. So let's go ahead and start. All right, so we're gonna start with this kind of black Angus lead from Guitar Rig. I know it's really loud right now, but we're gonna do some EQ and tame that up in a second. Uh, so let's go ahead and start doing all that. All right, so I'm just gonna EQ a little bit of the low, uh, kind of lows and low mids out, and then we're gonna do a uh, dynamic EQ around here, around that resonance. Let's go ahead and add a kickstart so it kind of ducks under that uh, main kick. All right, so with kickstart. And let's go ahead and add a phaser so it really has that kind of 80s effect. All right, so now with a phaser, here's what the settings look like. Nothing crazy. I don't even know if I just kind of pulled it up, changed one or two things, and then this is what I have. This helps give me that weird kind of chorusy, phasey sound that's going to kind of pan between speakers. And then I have another guitar layer that I'm basically going to copy this chain to. I'll show you that. Here is the second layer. And then with the bass line. Nothing crazy. And then I have this one extra little guitar that I'll show you. Here's what it sounds like, clean tracks with no effects. I wanna kind of process it like a pad, but here it is. Nothing insane. Let's go ahead and throw some processing on that. We're gonna use the Epic Texture preset, which we've used quite a bit. And then I'm just gonna throw on some extra reverb, maybe widen it out a bit and get the EQ sitting right. All right, so I just threw on a couple more things. We just have some repeater for some stereo delay. We have some EQ to tame it, some Haas to kind of spread it out and then some kickstart to really tuck it. And it's just this nice little motif before we start adding a bunch of sins. Here it is in the mix. Super simple, not doing anything insane. I think that's really all I wanna do for the guitars now. Let's go ahead and let's start moving on a synth. The synths in this song are anything super intense. Um, so yeah, let's just move on. All right, so the first synth that I have pulled up is just a little preset called Crush On You. It's from the uh, Wave preset pack that we have. And then I just kinda wanna play like a little ARP. So, so I'm gonna play something and then maybe throw on a couple presets. I think What's gonna be good is if I kind of automate this uh, cutoff open and closing as it goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and track that, do some automation, and then we'll check back in. All right, so here's what we have after doing a little bit of kickstart, a little bit of extra reverb, and then filtering out that cutoff opening and closing. So you can hear, kind of opens up, just creates a nice little bit of dynamic. So from the start, Super similar to the Weekends track. And then I want that to kind of cut out once we have this bass line come in. And then that's where we need to start pulling in some of those Rhodes Z kind of whirlets or chords. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Keyscape and find something within that. All right, so in Keyscape, I didn't want anything crazy. I just got like a Rhodes with like a nice little chorus. And then, I'm just gonna lay something down real quick. This will kind of be the main keys throughout the whole song, so let's see what we get. So I'm gonna lay that down, get it all time aligned, and then we'll check back in. All right, so I just layered it up a little bit, kind of added some extra voicings in here, some we have. And in the whole mix, it sounds a little bit something like this. Let's go ahead and let's layer that up. I feel like if we layer that, we can have a little bit of extra space and dimension. So I'm gonna add probably at least one, maybe two layers, um, and then we'll kind of see how it sounds. But I like that. That's pretty much all that we'll need going for the sense in the verse, I think. So I just did a little bit of layering off camera. Um, we just have a Wurlitzer right here. And it just adds a nice little extra depth. And then once everything kind of comes in, I ended up adding these piano saw keys that are from the Wave pack on our site. Um, I think it's the Piano Wave preset or Piano and Saw. 
yeah, piano wave. It was piano and song, and then I kind of changed it, but it sounds like this. And once everything comes in, it just helps that have a little bit of extra carry. And that should do it pretty much for that. Now let's start talking about what we want to do for a pre-chorus. So I'm fine with this kind of being a verse. For the pre-chorus, I kind of want to change chords um, just because I don't want it to get too, too repetitive with this kind of just three chord movement. So I'm going to play around and see what I can do to kind of maybe invert the chord progression or just do something a little bit different so it kind of creates tension. And then I'll check back in once I have a chord progression that I kind of like. All right, so I ended up laying down these four chords that I kind of feel like build a nice little bit of tension. And then they'll just resolve right into that first chord of that chord progression. So I feel pretty good about that. I'll probably copy the ARP over two, just so we have some movement. And then I'm gonna layer this up um, at least with one key layer. And then I kind of want some kind of either like bass pad or brass pad or something like that. So I'm gonna find those and then bring those in. All right, so I ended up finding a main key sound. We're gonna use the honky keys from the wave pack and it sounds like this. And that layered over with those pianos sounds like this. And then more importantly, what I did was I found this kind of big brass hit out of the wave. It's the Future Trap Brass, and I'm just kind of opening it, but it just sounds like this. And that's really all we need, I think, for that pre-chorus. I'll add some risers and transitions and stuff in a second, but I think that'll pretty much do it. I'm gonna add some risers and transitions, maybe a drum fill, and then I'll check back in so we can start working on the hook. All right, so I added a couple impacts, a down swish, and then a couple up risers to tom fills to transition to what will be the chorus. So let's go ahead and take a listen now. And then that tom fill is kind of your basic three tom 80s tom fill what i did is i just added a little phaser and some reverb to it so here's what it sounds like straight out of the gate then with that reverb and that phaser kind of gave me a cool little vibe so i'm cool with that let's start working on the percussion for the chorus i think we can probably copy over basically what we have for the verse since it's still going to be like a four on the floor but i do kind of want to start adding some extra layers so like maybe um i think like a shaker a tambourine and then um, maybe like some extra hats or something like that could really help bring some intensity. So I'm gonna start adding all of that in right now. All right, so I added a few layers that looks like a lot more, but it's really not doing anything crazy. Um, the main things are that I just, instead of having that open hi-hat just on that last hit, I have the open hi-hat going like this now. Just so it's not so offbeat. And then I ended up adding this cool little top loop in um, that I think is also from the wave. And that with a kick, snare, clap, and everything else that we already had sounds kind of nice. And then I just added some shakers and tambourines from our shakers and tambo pack, just to give me a little bit of life, and I didn't want more hi-hats. And then I just added these two like back claps. And then a first little hit when that first snare happens. And then I just did a little like stuttered hiccup right here. And kind of just duplicated that. I don't know if we'll need it, but we'll kind of play around once we start adding everything. Um, for the bass line, I think what we can probably do is kind of keep that as is. I don't really see a need to change it, especially since we do have it kind of change in the pre-chorus. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy all of this over and then just duplicate that like three times. So let's try that. Let's go ahead and get these guitars over here as well. And then this should set us up pretty nice 
to start building out these uh, core ascents because I do want to change those quite a bit. All right, let's start working on the core ascents now. I know the main thing that I want to do is instead of having these like little syncopated kind of key riffs, I more so just want like big sustained chords so we can start pulling in like brass and stuff like that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to keep the chord progression the same. I'm just going to make the, the chords really extended and really nice and lush rather than so short and staccato -y. All right, so I just duplicated that arp from the verse, nothing crazy. And then I just have these big brass hits that we kind of introduced in that pre-chorus. Those are just doing the big kind of root notes. And then what I did for all of these keys was I just did these big sustained bar chords rather than that little riff. Just so we can have a little bit more movement when we put a vocal in and a little bit more movement with some background synth. So let's go ahead and take a listen to what we have now. It's kind of the basis of the hook. All right, let's go ahead and start adding in some fun stuff. I wanna go ahead and add a little brass layer on the back. So what I'm gonna do is pull up some serum and then I think that we have a couple presets and a couple different packs. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I can probably go to Spectrum. I think there's some good uh, strings and brasses in there. So what I'm gonna do is I kinda just want something that can sit on the back end. So let's go to Spectrum, let's see. Let's try that. Kind of like that so let's try to track that up all right so here's what that sounds like i just pulled them down in volume a little bit and then i added um some chorus just to kind of give them a little bit more 80s vibe and some extra reverb and here's what they sound And then I want to go ahead and layer that layer up with kind of a brass hit so it has a little bit more staccato, but I don't want it to be super pokey. So let's go ahead and get a brass hit in. I think we can get that from the Spectrum Pack as well. All right, so I got these cool little brass sounds. It's just the BR-88 in the Spectrum Pack if y'all have that. If you don't, it's super simple. It's just basically a Juno brass pad. You can find them in almost any synth. And then in the mix, it sounds like this. Last thing I want to do is in disco and kind of 80s music, there tends to be this like droning high noise that just kind of continues throughout the whole song. So I'm just going to go ahead and find something to do that just to kind of pedal on a note or two the entire time. So I ended up finding this pad. It's just called Haunted from the Wave um, and it sounds pretty cool. And I just kind of have it continuing through this. It's tucked super far in the back, but it adds this nice little bit of harmonic addition that will kind of thicken it up in the mix. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to add a lead. I don't know if we'll need the lead in the entire time, um, depending on what the vocals will do, but I definitely want some kind of lead. So I'm going to go ahead and I already know exactly what preset I want. I want the Your Eyes preset from Spectrum that was basically modeled off of In Your Eyes by the weekend. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull that in and I'll write something out real quick. All right, so here is that uh, little lead that I just wrote. simple just process with some kickstart and some reverb same thing we've been doing this entire video y'all already know that by now so we're gonna skip it all right i'm gonna call that good with the instrumental i'm gonna start writing some vocals we've done quite a few videos recently on writing vocals writing lyrics how to write melodies so i might skip that um and then just kind of recap so i can show you guys what i track how i track it um but thematically i think we're just gonna go with something pretty typical for the weekend which is like just had his heart broke kind of looking for a saucy one night stand i don't really think that we need to go into super detail on that um but if you guys need a, a lyric recap, maybe we can do it in a video later. Go check out some of our other stuff on writing lyrics and writing melodies. It's just going to be those same techniques practiced here. All right, so we basically have 
all of the vocals now, I just wrote them off camera. Um, really nothing super special, same thing we've done a million times. But I will kind of show you how I layered up the vocals because that's more important and then how I processed all of the vocals. So here's kind of what the lead sounds like in the verse and then we've just got some extra background vocals. I've been finding ways to go with all the thoughts that I'm alone again. Hey, I guess I'm alone again. Hey. So there's not really much to cover on this lead vocal. It's kind of the same thing that we always do, just tuning, EQ, compression, and then a couple different de-essers. I have a de-esser kind of hitting um, like the main sibilance at like five to seven K. And then I have another de-esser that's kind of hitting uh, the really, really, really top end stuff, like the sizzly, like 10 plus K. And then I have my last de-esser that's just taking off some of those TH sounds that can be a little bit annoying. Um, but none of them are kind of doing anything crazy. And then in virtual mix rack, we just have the standard you know, 1176 blue stripe into an LA or a, like a LA-2A. And then just some EQ. I got a little bit of mag Q right here to add some like 20K just to like give me a little bit of shine over the mix. And then, you know, just kind of taming, you know, low end and basically like mid resonances right here. Nothing insane. And then vocal parallel widening is just going to be a roll in dimension D on a send. Slap delay is just repeater doing a slap delay. Short reverb is just the BM7 and a short room from Slate. Uh, stereo Vox is repeater with like a quarter note ping pong delay and then reverb Vox long is just going to be the hall of vintage verb with like a two second plate. So none of that is anything crazy. Here's kind of what that sounds like on its own. I've been finding ways to cope with all the thoughts that I'm alone again. Here's what the vocal sounded like with nothing on it. It's a uh, advanced audio 251 into a heritage audio HA81A. I've been finding ways to cope with all the thoughts that I'm alone again. So really just taming some of that low end, adding in some sparkle. And then really where it gets important is we have some of these extra layers. So I have what's called a soft chorus layer where um, we're going to use some harmonies in the verses and then some harmonies in the chorus. Um, they're actually unison in the chorus, but what I did was I put these on a stereo track and then put a little bit of extra chorus and a little bit of extra reverb on these to really kind of give them that nice 80 sound. And they're not panned 100%, they're panned like 83. Hey. Hey. So they're just doing that and then in the chorus. Look me in my eyes, say so. But by using that chorus and that extra reverb, it really helps them just kind of sit in. And then we have a, a low vocal, which is basically the exact same chain as the lead. I just don't have the extra EQ and the extra DSer because I don't really need them. Um, but we have this. Look me in my eyes, say the words. Hey. Hey. And these are pan 70 left and right. And then I have this like yelled chorus, which is more tuned, has a doubler and has extra reverb just to kind of give me some sauce. Hey. Hey. Look me in my eyes, say the word tonight. So it's not falsetto like the rest of the stuff. And then I've just basically got the lead chain without the de and the extra EQ copied again for kind of the unison left and right takes. So we'll start going over everything, but all of those together for these hey sound like this. I'm alone again. Hey, I guess I'm alone again. Hey, such a high and low for someone who can come and make me whole again. Hey, to find my soul again. And then in the chorus, what we do is we don't have that left and right unison that are 100% panned because I noticed in uh, take your take my breath that it's a little bit more narrow. And then when those extra vocals come in, it gets really wide. So what I did was I used those kind of soft chorus vocals that are only panned like 85% and have some chorus. And then the low vocals, which are only panned like 70%. And then that yelled chorus, which is one vocal up the middle, but with a doubler. Um, that's kind of what continues all the time. And then for some of the key phrases, that's where I pulled in the unison left and right that are panned 100% that come in pretty loud and super wide. And then that's also where we pull in these harmonies. So here's kind of what the chorus sounds like with everything. So baby, look me in my eyes, say the word tonight. Let me give you all my loving. So the let me give you all my loving basically just has these extra two layers. Let me give you all my loving. And then these harmonies right here. Let me give you all my loving. Let me give you all my loving. 
and those have that chorus and that extra reverb. So these are basically a duplicate of the soft vocals and these lead vocal left and right are basically a duplicate of the lead. So that's pretty much the entire vocal arrangement. I didn't do anything crazy with this. If you want, I'll play the whole song so you can listen to it all the way through. So after everything that we've added, I've structured it all in, added a couple little areas where I just pulled the volume down for urgency and then just kind of added a nice little structure to it. So here's what everything sounds like all together that we've done in this tutorial. Let's take a listen. And there you have it. I think we just finished up. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Again, I know it's super similar to Take My Breath, but the whole point of this was just to use some of those same techniques, styles, and sounds, and just kind of show you how to put it to a slightly unique twist. So feel free to take any of the stuff we talked about today and turn it into your own productions, kind of utilize it however you want. And you know, it's just always nice to have a bunch of tools in your arsenal that you can use. And it's cool to be able to kind of dissect whatever's happening on the radio. That way, if you have an artist ask you for it, or if you're inspired by it, you can figure out what to do to kind of put your own spin on that. So hopefully you guys like this video. We love doing these how to make style videos. So if y'all want more of that, let us know what artists or what songs y'all kind of want to see us not duplicate, but kind of replicate in style. Um, and then if y'all have any questions, let us know down below and we'll try to answer whatever we possibly can. If you want to check out a lot of the sounds that we used in this video, feel free to go over to makepopmusic.com. You can check out some of the packs. A lot that we used in this video would be like Dark Pop Volume 2, Spectrum, The Wave, and like the Shakers and Tambourines and the Hi-Hats pack. Um, so definitely go check those out if you want to support the channel or if you want to get some stuff like this. Other than that, we will see you guys next week. If you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe. Until then, much love everyone. Peace out. So